Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we're praying as the word of God is being thought tonight. We're asking that you flood our hearts with revelation, illumination, insight, and answers. Bring us to a place where we come to a deeper place in Jesus. Help us to experience healing and growth as persons. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Right, let's get into the word of God. So this, this morning, I'm, we've been talking about relationships, but the focus today is how to make your relationships and marriage stronger. Now, some of you, relationship is not your problem at all. You figured it out. The good thing about hearing this teaching is this. It will give you tools and resources on how you can share with other people. So you can tell other people and say, this is what I learned. So maybe your brother is struggling. Maybe your sister is struggling. Maybe you, know, you have friends who are struggling. You have a lot to tell them because you've learned something. That's the first thing. The second thing this will also do for you is that you would also know some great things you're doing well. And you will also know exactly how to do it better. You will know some great things you're doing well. And you also know exactly how to do it better. Glory to God. All right, so let's go. So I want to talk about how to make your relationship and marriage better. It's been a very touching series. I must say thank you for all of the feedbacks. You know, sometimes I watch these things online and it's really touching. So how to make your relationship and marriage better? Oh, yeah. Um, So the first thing is this about relationship and marriage. And I'm going to, this is what I'm going to finish with. I'm going to ask for some contributions and I'm going to finish with this. Before we can talk about relationship and marriage growth, we have to talk about health. Because health precedes what? Growth. And one of the things you will hear me say consistently in this teaching is this. Once one part in the relationship is not healthy, and healthy is not sick physically. Healthy is referring to, is not healthy emotionally. It will be difficult to get the relationship or the marriage going. So, we're going to really deal with that. So, the first thing I want to talk about today is this. What are the characteristics of very healthy relationships and marriages? So that you can see where you struggle and we can see together. And you can begin to say, okay, this is what we're going to work on. Are we ready for that now? All right. So, the first thing is this. Healthy relationships and marriages have great friendship. Healthy relationships and marriages have what? Great friendship. Let me read a scripture to help you with this. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. See what the Bible says here. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Proverbs 17, verse 17. The Bible says, A friend loveth at all times, but a brother is born for adversity. So, how do you know? Someone says, How do I know if my relationship, let's say you're dating, how do I know if we're getting it right? This is the signs. Just like when you go to the hospital, let me, I don't know who can help me here. You know, uh, maybe I can get, uh, Pastor, you come. When you go to the hospital, what, 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 one of the, the things that doctors will do is this. You go to the hospital, and when you get to the hospital, they will, they will check your eyes, uh, and they will check your tongue, and they will put, a, you know, something there and tell you to do tests. What are they doing? They are looking for vitals. It's called vitals. There are signs that shows that you are healthy. There are signs that shows that you are healthy. So that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, sir. What are the signs that shows that if if you're in a relationship, maybe a a pre-marriage relationship, it's healthy? What are the signs that shows that if you're married, it's healthy? The first thing is friendship. The first thing is friendship. And let me tell you, the Bible says that, and let me say something to you quickly here. When a marriage loses its friendship, (laughs) the marriage... When a marriage loses its friendship, they are not a couple, they are housemates. When a marriage loses its friendship, they are not a couple, they are housemates. Anybody can date anybody. But the way you will know if you're close is that you are friends. What does friendship look like? Let's just talk about this. So, if we're friends, that means we're vulnerable with each other. Vulnerable means I can tell you things that I should be ashamed of. And I trust that you will cover me. The Bible says Adam and Eve were naked and they were not ashamed. You know, one, one of the biggest family I'm, I'm going to talk about today, I was trying to tell her over the week, Daisy, is your voice back now? If your voice is back, just wave your hands. If it's not back, don't wave your hands. Is it back? It's not back yet. So Daisy and Mary stand, 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 stand at the back. Daisy and Mary stand. 
this couple here, I went to see them in the house last, some months ago. And you know, and I was just, you know, when I go and see people, I'm like, how is your marriage? Then you know what the wife told me? He said, ah, he said, me and my wife. He said, I'm my wife's, he said, I'm my husband's G. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm my husband's guy. He says, no, he says, I'm the guy. He's like, we perform together, everything we do together. You know, and for me, I'd never had a couple say that to me. And maybe never you want to tell me what that looks like. This is, do you want to come forward and come and tell me what this looks like for you in your marriage? Maybe we can learn from you. Yeah, maybe we can learn from you. And, 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 I, and I'm not sure they know how impactful that touched me. It's like hit me somewhere below. It says, I, it says no, no, I'm, I'm, and I know because most women don't know that their husband wants them to be their guy. Yeah, you, you have a microphone here. I mean, you can stand over here. You can stand over here. What makes it very comfortable? Yeah. Maybe you made a mistake telling me that day, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, yes. So, so what do you mean by yeah, your husband's guy? And your husband is here. You can share. Voice. You've lost your voice. Yes. Okay, let me help you. I will help you. You, you, you don't have to say anything loud. Just okay. hold the microphone closer. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't come to my house again. Huh? <laughs> don't come to my house. Um, I just meant like, I'm his best friend. When he's out with his friends, he's messaging me that they are dry. Nothing's happening there. He's like, what are you doing? Um, you know, trying to make plans for when he comes back, what we're going to do. Um, so, so, listen to this. Mary, the guy, he's with his friends. Then he's texting, like, these guys are so dry. I can't wait to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> like, all the girls are wondering, please tell us what to do. Is that not what you're thinking about? You know, it, it's, you know okay, okay, Mary... When did you get, you guys met when you were a bit younger? Yes, yes, we met when I was 16 and he was 18. You met when you were 16 and you were 18? Yeah. And you say, oh, that's the reason why. Well, I'll tell you something. People that met very young also have problems. Because when there's another season of the marriage, they cannot make some force into it. Okay, Neri, tell me, how did this happen? What, what, does, what, what does Daisy do to you that makes you feel as if, you know, that, yeah, tell, tell me, yeah. What, what does he do? Like, what, yeah. Oh, no, wow. Um, um. <laughs> no, tell me, you know, like. It, it, it's, it's just friendship. That, that's, that's all I'll say. It's just friendship. Um, it's just friendship. Having, uh, having a good time. Having a good time. That's, so, that's what does a good time mean? Let me tell you something. When you say good time, everybody thinks of sex. No, 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 not that one. And that one, and that one too, but the main thing. <laughs> wait, wait. No, I think I think the main thing is uh, the main thing is uh, is genuine friendship. Like, if you had a friend, your normal friend, you enjoy being with, your normal friend, you crack jokes with, you enjoy the same things, that that sort of thing. Oh, okay, okay. So, so tell me, like this last week, one kind of big thing, like you know, some like you know, my guy kind of thing, my guy moments we had, uh, like in the last one, maybe one month, like you know. Like maybe something you would tell your guy, you know, yeah, tell me what that looks like. And how did you guys get, have you guys always been like this? Um, I think so, yes, I think so. I think so, but, but it's, not, it's not a one thing, it's normal. It's, it's an everyday thing. It's an everyday thing. I think, I think it's an everyday thing. Mm. What do you think is responsible for this? I think, um, I think being able to communicate is also... Free, being free to communicate. So how do you guys argue so just or fight? Your mind. How do you guys argue or fight? Mm. Once in a while we argue and we fight, but when we argue and we fight, it's it's there and then and over. It, okay, it, so, the, it, so it has to finish that day. It doesn't continue to the next day. We address uh, it on that day. So tell me your own perspective, yeah. <laughs> I have to cast him now. <laughs> um, no, he's right. Um, we work at it, to be honest. We try to find things that we like to do together. Like what? Like, we love Game of Thrones. Like, seriously, we love Game of Thrones. <laughs> seriously. So you guys sit down and watch season uh, one, two? We read the books first. So have you read the books together? Yes. 
So he, he started the books and they were so good and he's like, these books are amazing, you have to read it. And so um, when he was done with the first book, he gave it to me and he went on to the second book. The book was so good. Eh? I finished the book, I was waiting for him, I was wasting time. I went to download the soft copy. <laughs> And then we read the books, and then we discussed about the books, and then the TV series came out, and then we watched everything. And then there's a new, um, what's the dragon one now? Yeah, and that's how you know that. I like you, true, I swear. <laughs> he came out, eh? No, he traveled, he traveled. And then another episode came out. I was like, I must watch this thing, as I know I have to wait. I, like, I just watched the first 15 minutes. I said, no, 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 no. And so I waited, I didn't watch the next episode, so we're gonna watch two episodes on Monday. Um, yeah, but we try to find things to, that we do together. Um, I want to notice something. The reason why someone says, why do you take all this time to teach? This relation, let me be honest with you. When it comes to relation of Bible teaching, I know you do see a lot of people, but when you listen to the Bible, there are practical, general guidelines. There are no specifics. But what we've learned about pattern is that those that get it right what did they get right? So we can follow the examples. So from what I'm hearing, you know, it's the fact that they work at their friendship by looking, just imagine that you love football and your wife starts watching football and starts saving the seasons on DSTV and they say, honey, ha, this happened, at sit and let's watch. Over some time, you will, which is what makes your friend is the fact that you guys have what similar interests. Thank you. Let's appreciate the two of them. Thank you. Thank you. They will take it from you. Thank you. Praise God. So the first question you want to ask yourself is this, and this is a good question. If you're, if you're dating or you're married, why are we not friends? Uh, who is dating here and you can tell you guys are not friends? Or you can tell you're not as friendly as you should be? Stop lying you're in the house of the Lord. The lady, should I give you a microphone? Will you share with me why you're not friends? Will you tell me? There's a lady over there that raised up the hand. Tell me why you're not friends, yeah. Not go, keep going. It's towards the, the, the usher. Just, lady, just raise up your hands again so they can see you, yeah. So you have to go the other way. You can't give her the microphone that way. This is good. So, so why are you not friends? Yeah. You can have your seat, you know, just feel relaxed, yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Because um, he's too busy with work and barely has time for anything. Okay, because he's too busy with work and barely has time for anything. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Another reason why you're not friends? And who wants to share? Yes, she wants to share. Thank you. There's another lady in the middle here in black, yeah. No, no, no. In the middle, behind the camera, you have to pay attention. You know, Chima, you need to do this better. You, you do a better job with this now. Yeah, behind the camera. Yeah, that's her, yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Okay. I just know we have nothing in common, just like the lady stated. You have nothing in common. We don't, actually, okay. but it's almost like I'm just waiting for the relationship to just... You're what? I'm just waiting for the relationship to die in natural death. Because it's the truth. We don't... It's almost like I'm one person with him, but he really doesn't know the real me. So okay. we don't watch... We don't even talk about movies. Like she said, I'm a Games of Drone fan. I'm sure he doesn't even know that. But we appear to be in a relationship. We appear to be in a relationship. So let me ask you a question. Just, Just... So let me ask you one question. Do you want this relationship on your way out? Because it will determine what I tell you. Like I said, I'm just waiting for it to You need to hold the microphone closer to your mouth, yeah? What? I'm just waiting for it to die natural there. Okay, so, so let, can, I, can I be your brother right now, not your pastor? If you don't want to waste your time, break up today. It's not that easy. So, so no, no, no. So let, let, me, let me tell you something. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is fourth service content, but I'll tell you today. This is for service content. The reason why a lot of people are delayed is because of useless dating. Okay. What is useless dating? Useless dating is dating where you gain something, but you know there's no future. True. So, I'm not being harsh to you, but if you want it, we can fix it. At least, 
if possible. He has a choice. Nobody can change that. It's not that easy. No, 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 no. I agree. I, so, so that's the thing. See, because you are there, you know what is easy and what is not exactly. easy. So, but the question, if you want it, then we can say, oh, let's work at it. But if you know it's going nowhere, then why are you staying there? Because yeah. it's not, not everyone easy. is perfect. Yeah. He's good at other things. Someone who has never hurt you in any way. Someone who kind of gives you peace of mind. But that true friendship, you don't have. So am I going to walk away from that because I'm looking for a friendship that it's not even there? Am I going to leave my peace of mind, which is more important to me, and start looking for friendship? Awesome, awesome question. So my, my feedback back to you is this. Why not, why not have a plan on how to improve this? Because it seems to be very good, but there's just an area that has a challenge. It's so that's why him. I asked you, why not? Do you want it? Can we improve that area? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I know that that area will never be improved. It's not him. Okay. It's not him. Now you sound like, you sound like my father God because you seem to know all things. <laughs> you know, but it's okay. I believe you. I believe you. You know, I believe you. You know why I believe you? When someone says, this is what I believe, that's what is true to them. It will always be unto you according to your faith. You know. But, but you will be surprised. You will be surprised that he can improve. You will be surprised, you know. And, and the thing also is this. So, you know, but the thing is that if you can live with that all your life, great. If that's what you can live with, great. You need to determine what is important to you. You know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is, is that great? Okay. Good, 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 good. So, so the question is this. The question is this. And the reason why, so I want to use a lady, although she didn't ask for my advice, but you know that I asked a question and she answered it. So I want to respond. I said, why are we not friends? And she said, we have nothing what in common. It's true you have nothing in common, so you can build things in common. It's true that you have what? Nothing in common, but what? You can what? Build things in common. So what is build things in common? For example, by the time you heard us speak, it was one person that was interested in Game of the Throne. And the other person decided to what pick the interest. So the way you build things in common is this. Don't tell the person, you are the one that wants to build. You can't the best to build it first. You are the one that wants to build. So you are the one that will build it in common with him or her. And the person will also reciprocate indirectly by building yours in common with you. And eventually, you guys will become friends. That's what I would have suggested if she asked me for my opinion. But she did not ask me, so I did not suggest it. Praise God. So the question is this about friendship. So what we're saying is this. What we're saying is this. How to make your relationship and marriage work. So the, Bible, so the first sign is friendship. Are we friends? Are we friends? Or we're not friends? question is why are we not friends we're not friends because we don't have things in common great how do we fix that or we're not friends because one party gets angry a lot okay how do we fix that because you if you can think you can also know the reasons why you're not friends then you now ask yourself how do we improve on the friendship i love what daisy said daisy said said you know there's this new series out and i'm refusing to watch it because i want us to watch watch it together she's making a deliberate plan for friendship you must understand that relationship and marriage has season there's a hot season where everything is like compelling because there's a lot of emotion but there's another reason where things stabilize and that's why you need systems to do the things you have to do so that's the first sign the second sign of relationship and marriages that work is this there is appreciation respect and tolerance there's what appreciation respect and tolerance a marriage where heartfelt thank you is missing is a sick marriage so when she prepares your food you even eat it without remembering to say thank you a marriage where i didn't say thank you where heartfelt thank you thank you can become official so, you know, 
just heartfelt thank you. So the way this is a gauge of your marriage or your relationship. You know, your girlfriend comes all the way, takes this cab for 45 minutes to come, and do you just say, Oh, I'm so thank you, thank you for spending time with me. That's good. Your your boyfriend goes out his way and sends you flowers and say, That's what you should do. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So, how do you gauge? How do you gauge if your relationship is held in the morning? There's great friendship. Number two, there is a lot of appreciation. There's a lot of what? Respect. You don't go at my back looking at my phone. If you want to look at my phone, ask me for it. And says, I would love to look at your phone. Hey, this is my phone. Respect. Just respect it. And there's tolerance. Tolerance means you understand I'm going to make mistakes, but you're going to always allow me to be me. Glory to God. A marriage where thank you, a heartfelt thank you is missing as a stomach. See, appreciation, respect, and tolerance. Stop looking for something to accuse your partner of. Look for something to thank him for. Stop looking for something to accuse your partner of. Look for something to thank him for. Hey, 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 what do you call it? He didn't pay school fees. Hey, why should I say thank you? Is that not what the husband does? There are lots of men that don't pay school fees. You guys had an awesome sex. You look at her, babe, you were so on fire today. Woo! See, you know, that's a way of saying thank you. But is the day she now says, I'm tired. You will not say, you're always tired. But the day she's not tired, do you remember to say thank you? Glory to God. So in the marriage, build a culture. See, respect is very key. When you respect people in your marriage, you think before you talk. Some people, the reason why people say they are disrespectful is that they talk before they think. When you're respectful in marriage, you, what? you think. See, your boss at work, before you talk to him, you think. How come you don't think at home? Because there's no respect. Glory to God. Build a culture of appreciation, respect, and tolerance. The third thing is this. This is the third thing about making the marriage work. Laughter. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22. Laughter. A marriage without laughter is dry and boring. You must create laughter in the marriage. Who has a marriage where they laugh a lot? want to learn from you. Okay, what has a relationship where you guys laugh a lot? And when you're dating, not three months dating, that's the laughing period. Yeah, when you start dating and when you're married, three months, it's a lot of laughter. But you need to make the laughter what intentional. How long are you guys? You raised up your hands. Six years. Married or dating? Dating. Okay. Yeah. Well, it depends if they met when they were young. It depends when they were young, you know. So tell me, how do you make sure you guys laugh a lot in your relationship? Okay. Um, so um, I believe communication yeah. matters a lot. So when um, I bring up a, a joke with him, we just discuss and then we find ourselves. So what brings up the joke? Myself and he does. Sometimes. He does. Yes. So, what do you do that brings laughter so that we can learn from you? Funny things bring laughter. Like what? Instagram posts. I'll send to him, he will laugh. He sends back TikTok. See, it's not me to be telling you 21 days to make your past laugh. They are telling you right now. So, what do you do from today? Start sending each other Instagram posts. Good. For example, there's a guy following, there's a guy following, he's a bank MD, but his WhatsApp status is the funniest in this world. He's a bank MD. He's, he, he, he comes to church. He's the funniest in this world. I always say, I miss my church. I say, send me this post. Send me this post. He's the funniest. And, and the reason why is that the tendency is that the world has tension. Marriage should be a place of safe heavens. But when they come home, this, this is what a lot of men don't like. And I want men to notice. A lot of women are very serious. So they take the marriage so serious. So when you get home, it's almost like a job. 
Every evening, honey, ah, thanks for coming. I want to talk about the kids. <laughs> then you now talk. The next thing, aha, uh -huh, honey, I forgot. Your mother came. Can we talk about her? Then the next, then every day, it's almost as if there's a board meeting. There's a board meeting. There's a board meeting. There's a board meeting. So you see the woman, the man will start withdrawing, withdrawing, withdrawing. And, and the reason why the woman is passionate is not because she's wicked, because it's an area, she has a lot of duty in that area. And you know the way it is, very serious people marry very unserious people. And very unserious people marry very serious people. And the serious people love them because they were. But you have to get a plan. There must be lots of laughter. So you send you send WhatsApp chat, yeah, and um, WhatsApp Instagram message. What else do you do? Sorry. What else do you do that that, that make that, that causes jokes? Yeah. Um, sometimes when we're walking on the road. What? When we're walking on the road. You're walking see, on the road, yeah. Yeah, we can see someone that is like dressing funny. And yeah. Just laugh at the person. <laughs> so you kind of. Like tap, we'll like tap ourselves and be like, can you look at this? Child? Can you can you do that? Look at that girl. Look at so, that. so I want to say something. Two things. She shares a fun moment with him. And he receives the fun moment. He doesn't kill it. And that fun moment, he also shares with her. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister. Is, is, there, any more, is there any more example over here? Yes, tell me. The lady at the back. This, this is so good. Are you learning some things today? Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, so, in my marriage, we don't take things too serious. Um, we found a way to. How, what cook. does that mean? So, if you don't, I'll give cook, you an example. If you don't cook, your man doesn't take it serious. So let me no, let me give you an example. Okay, please give me an example. There are sometimes. Oh, the other day I was tired and I was lying down, and my husband was hungry, <laughs> and he came to me and I was like, "Ah, babe, you know, talk say we did fast today. You're not going to cook," and knowing him. I know he's hungry, right? But I went to make the food and he was, he appreciated it. So another person would have been like, why is he talking to me like that? This is, is I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. But life is not that serious. We just take it as it comes. So tell me something that people should take. I mean, that's a good, great story. Tell me something that's happened that people would take very seriously, but your mind, you just laugh over it. Something that happened, something last week, something two weeks ago, something last month. So serious in terms of what? Serious, like other people just take it very like, mm, you know, and you just laugh over it. Does something come to mind? Nothing. Really. Nothing. But 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 the idea is that you guys take each other, you don't take it just so seriously. No. You, and and let me tell you, that's the way to be happy in life. You know, people. Some people take themselves too what seriously. As a matter of fact, as I'm preaching this way, some people don't like it. It's like what? Well, we're laughing, 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 laughing. But they're going to go to church. <laughs> Pastor, declare the word of God and let them know. <laughs> but I always think about something. All the time they've been declaring the word of God. Has it changed? <laughs> but sometimes, what you say in a funny way enters more. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. So, how do you know your marriage is very healthy? So, all of you that dated a marriage, put, put friendship there. Rate yourself. If your wife beside you, let your, give yourself. On a scale of 1 to 10, ask your wife, what do we rate? Ask your husband, what do you rate? On a scale of 1 to 10, put yourself there. If you're alone, write it when you get home. Ask with your wife. All of you online, put in the comment section. What, say friendship. What do you rate yourself if you're dating a marriage? The second thing, appreciation, respect, and tolerance. Put yourself there. Where do, I, where do we rate? Where do we rate? And the third one is laughter. Where do we rate? Where do we rate? Where do we rate? Where do we read? And the fourth one is this. This is the way you know if your marriage is healthy. So the first is friendship. The second is appreciation, respect, and tolerance. The third one is laughter. The fourth one is needs are paid attention to. People have needs. For a woman, a woman has security needs. These are emotional needs. You know, women has security. And security for women is two things. Financial and security. A woman needs to know. A woman needs to know that my financial future will not be put in trouble. So that's why sometimes you hear women saying that, are we broke? Because they need to know that. They need to know that emotionally they are secure, that I have the right place in your heart. So the same way women have emotional needs, men have a big need called respect. Listen, 
Respect is not a want for a man. It's a need. Like, it, it's like food. He gets respect hungry. Is food a need or a want? It's a need. It's something that you have to get. So, a man has a need called respect. Someone said, by respecting, no, no, no. You must, a woman must do things intentionally to service the respect need of what? Of a man. And say, okay, today, how will I show I respect him? Have a timetable. The same way, in the same way, man must have a timetable to demonstrate financial security and emotional security to the woman. In a great marriage, what you see is that the needs of people are met. People look out of their marriage when their needs are not met. I don't know if you noticed what I said. People look out of them. Of course, people look for a lot of reasons. But when your needs are met, see, if you are, if you are hungry, you will buy gala on the road. But if from home they've kitted you with pounded yam and correct, correct, you will see gala and say, what nonsense. So the reason why some marriages have extra is because the primary need of the man or the woman is not what? He's not done. That's why you see, when you watch all this African magic, you see all those young girls that did the older man, oh, chief, oh, these, oh, because they're just trying to appeal to an area of need. She says, I can't give you that money. Say, oh, 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 are you doing like this for me? He will touch the chest, rub the stomach, the big stomach. But the wife, when he says, I can't give you money, what do you mean by that? <laughs> if it's a joke, stop it all. <laughs> Thank God you know where you, I know where your money is. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's why you see, you, you see, you, 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 you see, even for the women, the emotional security, someone that you will just let you know how he feels about you let you know how much he loves you just makes you feel a certain way so in a great marriage the first thing i said is that i never said all needs are met because nobody's god what i said was that needs are paid attention to the worst marriage is where you feel as if your needs are violated they don't even acknowledge that your needs exist is a terrible marriage that you feel as if you need something and the person goes what's that Glory to God. Who understand what I'm talking about? The fourth thing, the, the fifth thing. So we're looking at the gate of marriage. The fifth thing is that marriages that marriages that are healthy are safe. And this is very powerful. And this is where I'm going to begin to close. Marriage that are healthy are what? Are safe. Relationship that are healthy are safe. I'm not ashamed to be myself. Some people are themselves in their marriage, but they have to impose it. They are safe. Women, if you ever get, if your husband gets tempted by another woman, if he can discuss it with you, it's because you made it a safe place. If your wife gets tempted by another man, and your wife can discuss it with you, it's because you mean the safe place. Safe does not mean we tolerate nonsense. Safe means that whatever it is, we're here. We can do it together. That's what safe means. And, and the truth is this, everybody's looking for a safe place. And this is one of the most difficult things because this safe has to do with trust, has to do with emotions. So the question is this, how do you know your relationship is good? Is it safe for you? You know, I, you know <laughs> one time, one time, someone to see this girlfriend, we're younger that time, and the girlfriend, well, went to see the girlfriend, and it was really at night, at 10 p.m., I think she was asleep, and they woke her up, and by the time they woke her up, that her boyfriend had come, she said, let me go and do my makeup first. I said, what kind of relationship is this? That you have to be made up. That when, is he not going to see you for real? Will he be disappointed? And let me say something to you. Look up here. I want to say something very deep. One of the reasons why Christians' marriages struggle is that we always think because they are Christians, we assume a lot. Once they say they go to a church and they walk and they speak in tongues, we assume. There's a lot of assumption. 
That's a lot of assumption. It's not an assumption. He will be this way, he will be that way. And those assumptions may not be true. And, and many of you are dating people that you don't, you don't feel safe with. Many of you were in marriages where you don't feel safe with. In, in the first service, a lady said that story and that story almost broke me down. And she said, she said, she was sharing and she said, it was just a touching story. He said, my children even ask me, did you make a blood covenant with our father? That how does someone treat you like this and you choose to stay in the marriage? She said, a few months ago, he said, my husband came to my office, my colleague walked in and my husband, and my husband told my colleague, she's my sister. He said, and our first daughter was right there and she did not care that he said so. That marriage has become unsafe. So the question is this. This is a question. How do you know you have a great relationship? Because what homes should be is that homes should be a place you can run to. When things are happening at work, when things are happening in business, when you lose money, I can run home. Home is my place of safety. But that safety doesn't come. That safety is what we build together. That this, oh my God. Who knows what I'm talking about right now? Because now, now we're getting deep. Now, now it's getting really deep. Now it's getting really deep. Because this is a challenge. Most people want a safe marriage. But they're not willing to commit to building safety. And the reason why is that for you to build safety, I need to know once I tell you something, it does not become a weapon. Once I tell you something, it doesn't become a weapon. Once I tell you that I slept with that person, you say, hey, you, 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 you again. He doesn't become a weapon. I, I need to know that once I tell you my secret, it's not a weapon. Once I tell you my secret, I don't hear you tell your family members. Especially when we fight. There are things that couples must know and it must die within them. And the third thing is that once I tell you my pain, you don't turn into a joke. Especially when it's not funny. Someone says to you, you know, I, you know, I, I, I struggle with this. And every time you want to joke, you tease him or her with that struggle until they become eventually ashamed. So, this is what I'm going to narrow in. So, the question is this. Why is it that some people cannot build safe places in their home? The reason is this. Because they are not whole by themselves. Whole is W-H-O-L-E. They are not whole. And I've said that before. I said, damage people will damage others without knowing. I said, when you bleed, you will bleed on people that are close to you. I, I want to take an illustration. I, I used the illustration before. I'm going to take it again. W will you please come? Will you please come? And, and I, I wanted to be, yeah, I, I wanted to, this, this happened. This happened. Some of you will have seen this online. And I wish I could not see the wound, you know, because the first thing is that, what the first thing we all do is this. We cover our wound. And that's why we're not saved. Let me tell you why we're not saved. So we cover our wound and we can't see the wound, but be limping. But it's obvious that you're limping. Listen, your limping is not the problem. Your limping is the symptom that you have a problem. The reason why you can't trust your wife is not the problem. It's the symptom that there's something else going on in your life. The reason why you cannot forgive and move on is not the problem. It's a symptom. So what happens that when they're limping? Limps are. Limps are. So it's limping. We, we keep fixing the limping. No, sir. You have to fix the wound. So a lot of marriages are busy fixing the limping. I mean, during the course of this, one, one guy said, said in the course of this and said, I've been sexually abused when I was three and I used to have sex with all manners of girls. That kind of guy. Uh, it, it, so, so normally in the day, I have to have sex just to be like lunch. He said, I grew up knowing sex like what I do every day. When that kind of guy marries right now, you will not say the wife does not have a high libido. No. It's not a libido problem again. The guy is not, it's like something has gone wrong within that has to be treated. 
That's why third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospers. Your marriage will not prosper beyond how your soul prospers. Your marriage will not prosper beyond what how your soul prospers. So the reason why a lot of people cannot build a safe place from home, a home is this. Number one, they've never seen a safe place in their marriage, in their parents' marriage. Let me, uh, that's too fast. The reason why some people can't make their marriage a safe place is because, number one, they are not used to safety. So when they get to a safe place, they must cause trouble. Some people's natural state is chaos. I hope you know that. Do you have a friend that when you get to his room, when he's tidy up and organized, you know, what went wrong? What are you expecting? Do you have anybody like that in your family? Why? Because the natural state is that pant is over there, towel is over there, shoe is over there. That's the nat- It's the normal. If the room is tidy and the bed is laid, some sun is coming. Some people's natural state is just chaos. Someone says, but I don't like chaos. If you grew up in chaos, most likely chaos will be your natural state. Because it's what you're used to. It's what you're used to. The second thing is this. If you've not seen safety demonstrated in a family setting, it will be difficult to reproduce it. How can you tell your great-grandmother what snow is? She never saw it. She cannot comprehend it. So, once you've not seen safety demonstrated in a relationship, it's difficult to what? Reproduce it. But that's what we're teaching here. So, how do I produce a relationship that I save? The first thing is by, is by you being healthy by yourself. So, you come into the relationship and we can see that you're limping. We can see you're struggling. We can see. I just in the top picture. Just, just on the shoulder now. I, I can see that you're struggling. Keep coming. You know, I can see that you're struggling. I just, I can see you're struggling. I can see you're struggling. When you're struggling, your struggle means that there's something wrong. But the thing is that you keep dealing with the struggle. You're not dealing with what is wrong. And most of the time, I, I wish we could really cover this up. You know, please come back. Out. L- l- let me help. And now, if this is not, if this is here, most of the time, he will not have this. He will put his trousers over his wound. And most of you, what you've done because you are illiterate, your intelligence, is that there's an emotional wound you have, but you've put what? You've put stuff over it. You've put your success over it. So every time you talk, you want to let us know how big you are, how you know you're UN president and you work in Chevron and you're a senior manager here. But the thing is that you've just put bandage all over your wounds. Some people, they just become so generous with sex. They sleep with everybody. You know why they sleep with everybody? Because they're trying to get some kind of love. And they just put it there. And, and you know the thing? The challenge with covering your wound is this. This is the challenge. The moment I touch you, ah! It's not my touch that made you respond that way. Your over, your, over, your over response is because of the wound you carry. Many people are responding to stimulus in their marriages because of their baggage. baggage. Many people are over responding to stimulus in their marriage because of something they carry. You know, when I began to teach this, a lady said, Pastor, please, I don't want to teach this again. And the reason why is this, because when you teach about emotional wounds, for you to heal the wound, you must open it up. And people say, I have learned how to manage limping. Please, don't touch it. Don't open me up, because that's going to be painful. But guess what? When we open you up, it pains you for one day, two days. But the wound heals permanently. And the limping is gone. Glory to God. I said glory to God. How do you know? So, so I'm just going to backtrack a little. I'm just going to backtrack a little. How do you know if you have emotional baggage? I will just put it there. Number one, but just, just I mentioned some. You can, you can stay back. Thank you, my brother. I, I mentioned some. How do you know if you have emotional issues that are affecting your relationship? Number one, flashbacks. What is flashback? Flashback can be explicit or be implicit. They are memories. When they are explicit, you will feel exactly what you felt when it happened. When they are implicit, you will feel the emotion, but you don't have the details. Did you notice what happened to Joseph when he saw his brothers? He had the flashback. As soon as he saw them, the Bible says he ran away and he went to cry. Why? All the pain 
that they did to him came back instantly. And many of you were here. You will just find out that you're very suspicious of men because of something that happened to your dad and your mom. You don't even have details because your flashback is implicit. There's no detail but it's feeling. But that's why you cannot build a safe family. Glory to God. Some other people, some other people, it's explicit. So, so that's the first thing. The second way, because I, I spoke about this earlier. The second way is this. When people know they have this, you will just begin to have trust issues and loneliness. You, you will just begin to find it hard to trust. When someone says, I love you. Yeah. Love you. This guy thinks I'm an idiot. When a girl says, I love you, say, uh, just say you want my money. Just trust issues. There's trust issues. There's loneliness. You, it's one thing to be alone, but some of you are extra, you extra value loneliness. So how do you know if, how do you know you have emotional baggage? Number one, flashbacks. Number two, trust issues and loneliness. Number three is this, emotional overreaction. You will notice small things make you cry. Small things get you very angry. Who, who, know people, who, who knows people like that? You know what I'm talking about? Small thing. You just start crying. You're not crying because of what happened. You're crying because what happened is connected to something else. So, it's a chain. There's an emotion. It, sometimes it's not crying. It's anger. 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 You, 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 what you vibrate. Simple. He came home late. 30 minutes later. Huh. You will just take your chair, put it outside the house. You say, huh, you have started. Irikuni, you have started. I knew. I was waiting for what you would do it. But I didn't know it would be so soon. You, you just like, ah, honey, wait and ask. I shall ask. You think I'm a fool. I know where you went to. I, this is how they start. This is how they start. How do you know it's how they start? Because you're connecting something to what it's not connected to. And, and the reason I'm saying so is because one of the signs of a healthy marriage is that you want to be the safe place. But because you or yourself are not healthy, instead of you building a safe place, you build the place you damage. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so how do you know you have this? There's the flashbacks there. You can't control your emotions. You can't control your anger. You can't control your... The, the other thing also is this. That there's always people that have emotional issues. They have heavy hearts. When they talk to you, you just always say, what's wrong? Nothing. So, you know, that, that sign is an expression of deep things going on with it. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. And the reason I'm saying so is that you know that where we're coming from is this. We're coming from signs of what? Healthy and what? Healthy and what? Relationships and marriages. And we've come to a place that says this is why. Because what I want to challenge you is this. Can you make your relationship a safe place? But I know that you cannot make your relationship a safe place because you don't have safeness. You, don't, you can't make it peaceful because you've not found peace on the inside. Okay, let me take some conversations and we'll close in prayer. And we'll close in prayer. Yeah. So, this is how, you, let, let, let's, let's see. So, how do you make your relationship safe? I've given you these criteria. You go back home and begin to say, this is where we are. On a scale of 1 to 10, we're 5. How do we move from 5 to what? 7. How do we move from 6 to what? 8. You begin to drop the strategy to move that way. What mindset do I need to have? To move that way. Let's take some conversation. You know, of people that, you know, as I spoke about signs of emotional pain, you could, you could relate to the flashback. You could relate to the heaviness. You could relate with the trust issues. You could relate to the fact that you overreact. You know, if you want to share a story like that or you want to share your friend's story, let, let's, let, can you just put up your hands? Let's, let's share some stories today. Glory to God. Okay, let's put the hands together for the Lord. That, that, that's great. That's great. Let's, let's do it. Let's put on the together for the Lord again. Okay, so who's going to share first? Who's going to share first? You know, who's going to share first? And anybody? Okay, at the back. Look at that. At the back. Yeah. Can we have two microphones so that we can make this faster for everyone, please? At the back. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Good 
morning, church. Good morning. Okay, so um, I basically related with everything um, from flashbacks to trust issues and um, emotional overreaction. Okay. So um, last year, my relationship of um, four years ended and it was really terrible. So um, any guy I met and it was beginning to show patterns, I'll be like, you, you have come. So um, it, it kept on like that. Um, I knew I had like two or three relationships that if I had actually been myself, it would have worked out fine. Take but, note of what she said. If I had been myself. So in retrospect, she was hurt and wounded. But she did not know. Many of you get into relationships with nice people and destroy it. Not because you are not a great person. You are not just in the best emotional state. And that's what we say in church. Once you date, give it some time to heal. Give it some time to heal. Yes, please continue. You just have one minute more. Yes, yeah, so, but because of my um, not being myself, I ruined them. So, currently I'm in a new relationship and something similar happened last night again. And wow. <laughs> this time I just made up my mind, like here in church, I had to text him and I'm like, oh, my wow, village that, people that's want that's to send so me good. back that's to the so streets. <laughs> that's so good. But I will not agree. So, that, that, that's, that's a story of a changed it. life. That, that's God coming through. Yep, 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 yep. That, that's so good. Someone says, how do you... There's someone that said that wants to talk. You, you're going to say your story. Someone says, how do you know? I will tell you a story from my family. I was about seven years old, maybe six. I will never forget. And it's amazing how, as a child, I remember the stories because the stories marked me. This is not my story. This is my sister's story. I, I told you before that my, we lived alone with my mom. So because we lived alone, my mother had... My mom was quite successful. So we had all these loads of people that used to stay with us. There was a time that we had close to 50 people that used to stay with us for holiday. 50. So, I mean, that was a culture, you know, in my house because we had this huge place that we all could stay. And in, but when they come and stay, we have to kind of change the room arrangements, share rooms with them and all of those things. And one of the occasions, and this is, this really hurts. I remember when we were in the house before we moved to the final house before my mom, that my mom, you know, just getting emotional, just remember it. And I was about six or seven, and I remember because of the dynamics, my mom had said that for the period of the holiday, that she'd sleep in her room. And I would sleep in her room. But it used to be just me and her. But this particular night, it was me, her, and she had invited my staff to sleep in her room. Well, I didn't think anything was big. Until 1 a.m., my mother beat the living day out of my sister. You know, my sister was crying, shouting. She had locked the door. So I just had to pretend I was asleep. But I could not sleep. And my mother had brought pepper, raw pepper. And my mother was a ten in one woman. And she, of course, like I always say, it's always at a place of love. Beat her! And I kept on hearing, you want to have sex, eh? I would, he said, is this thing that's worrying your private part? He said, this pepper is going to go inside. She said, you want to have activity? You will have activity tonight. Either that pepper went inside, I don't know. But all I knew was that for three hours, from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m., my sister was jumping, crying, jumping, crying, jumping, crying. This year, me and my sister got around. My sister is almost going to be 50. We began to talk. And we talk about our relatives. I should like, ah, oh, those people, I better go. She be that the ones that lied on me, that one of my cousins was sleeping with her. He said that never happened. And when she said that story, the pain was still as fresh as possible. He said, he said, I'm not angry with mommy for her response. Because that's what a mother would do if you hear your cousin is sleeping with your daughter. He said, my pain is that why didn't my mother believe me? And people carry those kind of things. See, I was not even in the equation, but I felt it as a person. This happened nothing less than 30-something years ago. And you know what? To be honest with you, to my mother's death, my sister and my mother struggled all through. And they may never know why they struggle, 
but this will be part of it. To my, to my mother died, my sister and my mother, they were never, they would, it was a great relationship, but it was always struggle. Because all of those things has been sown. The question I'm asking you is this. You want to have a great marriage. Are you healthy enough for what you want? Or the person you're going to date, are you going to bleed on him because you're bleeding? Are you going to damage the person that loves you because you're damaged? Maybe that's the reason why, as a single person, you think you're delayed, but God is holding you back, hoping that you can, he can heal you in the process. But you are busy pursuing relationship. But God says, it's not relationship you want now. You want what? Healing. Listen, no matter how successful you are, pain is pain. Joseph became a prime minister. When he saw his brothers, he went into a room and he cried. And remember, he cried one, two, three times. The final time he revealed himself, he told all the Egyptians, go out. Then he just began to cry. He says, I am your brother, Joseph. What he was saying is this. This is the person you tried to kill. And you can cover your pain as long as you want. But you need to be safe. Listen to me. And this is a scripture we read last week. Psalm 147 verse 3. And I can't finish in this service. I would probably do the next service. Psalm 147 verse 3. This is, what, this is the scripture. Everybody look up the, on the screen. He said, God... He healed the broken in heart and bind it up. Yeah, wounds. Listen, all of you that are dating, this is your challenge. All of you that are dating, all of you that are married, th sit down with your partner. Sit down with yourself and say, these are the signs of healthy relationships. Where am I? How do I go to the next level? And in terms of safety, where am I? If I need to fix myself, then I need to fix myself. Were you blessed?